Today I'm reviewing some Hypericon T5 sized LED light tube replacements. These are designed to go in place of your standard fluorescent lights in a fluorescent light fixture. You do need to disable your ballast for whichever sockets you're going to use the LED lights on. If you want to know how to go ahead and wire these for uh, the replacement, make sure you check out my other videos on my Gadget Class channel. I'm going to do a whole series comparing the various types of uh, LED light tubes, how to do the disabling of the ballast, how to do the wiring, um, getting into uh, ballasts that have external converters. Um, there's a lot to talk about there and it's too much to include in this one video here. So for this uh, video, I'm just gonna do a review on this one set of lights from Hypericon. Um, there are different manufacturers, different sizes. They come in all sorts of shapes, colors, and sizes. Um, the Hypericons have a nice uh, offset set of G5 pins there. The five millimeter spacing on the G5 pins that you have on your T5 bulbs is matched on the Hypericon bulb, but they offset it up here to the back of the light so that it'll work in more lights. If you have a really close quarters light fixture, that's uh, gonna help you out a lot. Um, if you've got one that you can't even fit that big tube in there, um, I am gonna be reviewing uh, lights like these that have an external converter from Uber LED. Uh, but uh, the, the way the Hypericon offset the pins uh, makes for a lot more compatibility with light fixtures. Um, I like the way they did that and I have not seen uh, any other manufacturers doing that yet. Uh, they are also completely round, which is a good thing. Uh, unlike some other manufacturers that have a more oval shape to them, uh, the round ones is going to help you fit in a lot more fixtures. So in terms of installation, all you have to do is uh, disable the ballast. It's really easy. It's really easy. It's not as complicated as it seems, but make sure you watch my video on doing the ballast disabling um, just to make sure you're doing it right. Once you do that, um, they are non, non, uh, the polarity is not important. You can flip this bulb around. Either way, you're not gonna cause damage to the bulb. Um, it does not matter which way you turn it. So in terms of light output, I've got a uh, lux meter here set up and uh, we're in the uh, middle range there. So you're gonna multiply that number by 10 to get our total lux. So we're at 3,720 lux with these two lights on. Now let's see how much light the standard fluorescent tubes put out. And granted, this is not a very good test because the light meter here is actually pointed more directly at these two fluorescent tubes. Um, but we're actually only seeing uh, 2,250, 60. These do warm up. Uh, fluorescent light tubes do take a minute to warm up. I think the max I got was up around 4,000. So I was getting slightly higher on these two fluorescent light tubes. Um, but that's probably because uh, this is pointed more directly at them. But it just goes to show that uh, the output is pretty similar. Now, if we look up here, this fixture has two standard fluorescent light tubes installed. Compare that output to this fixture here that has two Hypericon T5 light tubes. The light output is uh, pretty much the same. It does look slightly different because these are a much warmer temperature. Those are in like the, the 4,000 range, whereas the Hypericons are in a true 5,000 color range. So the Hypericons are gonna be more closer to daylight. And these are gonna be a, a much warmer, warmer light there. So in terms of color output, uh, I do like the color. It is closer to daylight. They are 22 watts and uh, 2200 lumens. So they have a little bit more output some, than some of the other ones I've reviewed. Um, and uh, compared to the standard fluorescent, they're about the same. Um, it'd be nice if I had a uh, 5000K fluorescent light tubes here to compare them to, but these are a little bit warmer, so that does throw my test off a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, disable all these other lights in the shop and I'll show you what it looks like uh, with just the fluorescent and just the Hypericons.
All right, I've disabled all the other lights in the shop except for these two banks here. I'm standing directly under the Hypericons and I'm getting a Lux reading of 264. Let's go over here. And I'm getting a Lux reading of 272. So we got about an eight lux difference between the two light banks there. Very similar to the readings we got or the difference I got on the, the workbench there. So I'm gonna chalk that up to the difference in the color temperature. I'm guessing if we used a, a fluorescent tube of a similar color temperature, we'd probably get similar readings. Um, but it's definitely close enough to be uh, well within the acceptable range. Um, I'm going to go ahead and highly recommend these Hypericons. I like the way they offset the pins. Uh, they are an American-based company. Um, I like the way they do business. I like the way they communicate. I like the shape and style of their end pins. The light output is consistent, um, very even across the whole bulb. Um, I cannot find anything wrong with these. So I'm going to go ahead and give these a 5 out of 5. Make sure you hit yes for found this review helpful. Make sure you hit the thumbs up button over on the YouTube video. Subscribe to the YouTube channel and make sure you watch all the new LED light series I'm going to be doing here in the next uh, month or two.